Cooks. And we're coming to you live. We're going to show you how to make golden hash browns. Um, these are out of a box that I got at Sam's Club. And we're going to take a measuring cup and we're going to um, use a cup of water and it's really, really hot, y'all. And we're gonna use a cup of the hash browns. And we're gonna hydrate these while we're getting out our sausage. So, we're gonna pour in a cup of hash browns. I think I might have got too many. <laughs> Put them down in the water and smash them, and then they're going to hydrate. Put those back in there. They didn't get wet. Okay. So while those are hydrating, we are going to put those to the side and make some sausage. So just for me and Chris, um, a cup of this biscuit mix will be more than enough. I want to see what kind of view y'all got, so I can look on my phone and tell. Let's put it right here and see. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is get some buttermilk out of the refrigerator. Let's go ahead and stick our sausage in here. I'm going to turn it down to medium low. And I'm just going to make four pieces. We keep it frozen. And that way, it's always ready um, to cook when we need it. Easy to do it that way. All right, with this, you don't need a blending fork or anything. Um, these are actually spoons I had used to mix up my coffee. I'll use one. So you're just going to add, uh-oh, that buttermilk's frozen, y'all. I better shake it up. You're going to add buttermilk. Till it's sticky. Let's see if I can change our view. So you want all of the flour off the bottom of the bowl, but you don't want it to be real, real, you know, moist. Just, just must moist enough to take the all of the flour off the bottom of the bowl. That's perfect right there. So now what we're going to do, and I don't normally put my biscuit mix in my sifter because it has little pieces of um, it has little pieces of shortening in it, so I don't normally put it in the mix, in the sifter. So I get out my self rising flour to do that. Put it in my Sifter. Let me pull y'all out a little bit. Y'all are a little bit too close up. That's what's wrong. Okay. It's going to take some getting used to this new camera. Flower your surface. going to look a lot better once I get it on my, my head strap, this little GoPro. Um, so the next video will be even better than this one. So now we're going to um, fold it over about seven or eight times at least. That's what makes them rise up pretty. We're going to pat it out. Look at this new biscuit cutter, y'all. It's so cute. It's real heavy, too. It's got a little hole in the side of it. It's just an old antique biscuit cutter. I love it. 
Let's look at our sausage. It's fine, just like it is. So, let's cut out these biscuits. I wonder how many biscuits have been cut out with this old biscuit cutter. I got it the other day at down in St. Mary's when we went to St. Mary's. They also had a 1930s blending fork in that store. Um, and I wanted it, but they wanted, I think it was $30 for it. And it was the old, it said Foley fork, 1930s. Uh, <clears throat> so it was an old one. And it would have been really cool to get, but I didn't spend the money. But when we go back down there, I'll go get it. I doubt anybody else is gonna buy it. Okay, there's this biscuit I rolled. Pretty. Nice, perfect biscuit. We're gonna grab this air fryer, put our biscuits down inside of it. Now you can pat the tops of them with buttermilk. I think today I'm gonna put them together and bake them just like they would be if they were in my oven and see how they turn out. So we're gonna turn this on. I've got it unplugged, I'm gonna have to wash my hands. Okay. I have to switch from back and forth from this um, kettle and this. I use them both all the time. So we're going to turn it on and hit the bread button and hit start. Okay, that is a Kasori air fryer that I absolutely love. So um, the great thing about this Kasori air fryer is that it has Wi-Fi built in. You can see right there that it has a Wi-Fi. It has an app on your telephone. You can control it from your phone. You can also see the Kasori recipes on your telephone and make a recipe. Um, it's really cool. I'm gonna do a video for you guys really soon. I like to use something flat to get my sausage up off the bottom uh, the first time I flip it. Look how perfectly brown it is on the bottom. That's from using um, a preheated pan and also from letting it sit in here long enough to get brown um, on a medium high temperature and it stays flat like that um, and makes a really pretty piece of sausage when you do that. Now while we're waiting on that sausage, oh, we're gonna clean up this mess. It'll only take a second. Gonna use my handy dandy scraper. Scrape this off into this trash can I got right here. It's got a brand new bag in it, so I didn't touch anything dirty. I'm gonna scrape this off and into the trash can. We'll use a cold wash rag to wipe off flour. It always uh, pulls it right up. If you use a warm wash rag, it actually makes it sticky and it's harder to clean. Put up our milk. Let's grab our sifter and put it up. We can put up our flour. We're not gonna use it anymore. And you can get everything you see me use online at www.collardvalleycooks.com. Oh, I switched those. This is biscuit mix. 
And this is self-rising flour. I want to make that mistake more than once. All right, this is getting about done. So we're going to be ready to do our hash browns in just a second. They have hydrated. You need to let them sit a good five to, you know, five minutes or so at least, five to 10 minutes. And so it was good we went ahead and made biscuits because they had plenty of time to hydrate and they're going to be really good with some ketchup once we fry them up today. I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to use this to fry up my hash browns. It is a nonstick flat pancake pan that Chris uses every single Sunday to make pancakes. Um, so I think we'll fry them up on there. is about done. I'm just going to transfer it over to this other. You know what? We might try to fry up the hash browns in this and that way they got a little bacon grease in them. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Why not? Why not, y'all? Why not? Let me gr grab something to put our sausage in. What? Not a lot. There ain't hardly any in the bottom of this thing. Oh, I didn't know what you meant. All right, let's get this sa sausage up out of the pan. I said bacon grease, y'all. I meant sausage. Y'all know how crazy I am. This is perfectly done and ready to get out. Nice sausage. Okay. The cool thing about wearing this GoPro is that you actually see the view that I see. And it will really even be more like that once I get it up on my head. I'm going to scrape this off the bottom because if I don't, my hash browns are going to stick. Okay. All right. I'm going to put just a little extra oil in here. And we're going to throw these browns in here. I'm going to spread them out. And we're going to salt and pepper them really good. So here's the salt. Y'all let me know if y'all like my GoPro view. I'm excited about it. Here's the pepper. Yummy. And why not get out a little bit of uh, butter? Chris bought me some yesterday. Well, I might have some in here. I do. Some of my leftover butter. Some of it. Let me grab some. Now you're gonna want these hash browns to get good and brown. So, we don't have to rush them, okay? Let's give it a little bit of oil. They've already soaked up all that oil I put down in there. It'd be easier to make them in a nonstick pan. Uh, but my iron skillets have a pretty good doggone finish on them. And I do not treat them like most people tell you to. I do it the same way my mama did it, my granny did it for years, and we use soap. Because soap, back in the old days, was full of, it was stronger. And it did hurt the finish of your cast iron. But in today's world, our soap is not. Not if you just use regular dish soap. So, um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with washing your cast iron in soap as long as it like i said it's just your regular dish soap it's not going to hurt a thing and then once i wash it i dry it bring it back over here put it on the stove and um i'm going to turn these up 
and let them start getting really brown, okay? But anyway, I, tur I put them back on the stove, rub them down with a little oil, and let them sit on a low setting for about five to 10 minutes. Let's see how these are looking. Nice. Looks good. Now I'm gonna turn it up to a higher temperature and let them get really brown. So the highest temperature this thing has is 400. So we're going to hit the temp button, take it up to 400, and then I'm gonna take the uh, time button, take it down to about four minutes. And they should be nice and brown and ready to eat. Uh-oh, one, two, three, four. Really? Are you kidding me? Start. Man, that took forever, didn't it? Lordy B. Now these are starting to get brown. But you want them to get nice and brown before you try to flip them. They are not there yet, okay? So you gotta be patient with them. They're getting brown around in here a little bit. And that's where the um, fire is. I'm gonna pull y'all's view down just a little bit before we um, take these out of the skillet so y'all can see it better. Is that better? All right, let me grab something to get this with. It's hot. All right, I'm gonna try to flip one side of them. Now you don't have to do like me and try to make this many at one time. Just like going to Waffle House. All right, let's put a little bit more oil in here. These are gonna be good, good, good. A little more butter, why not? Now it's hot. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. It won't burn. Yummy! All of it's about done. All we gotta do is make an egg and we'll be ready to eat. Ready to eat. Yummy. All right, I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit more. I'm, I'm changing my mind back and forth on the heat. But you gotta watch it and make sure that, you know, it's cooking and not getting too brown too fast so, so that your hash browns are good and tasty, okay? So you don't wanna just throw them in there and burn them on the outside and then be not quite done on the inside. So um, this is a really easy, hash brown compared to buying the frozen uh, because you don't put them in the fan, pan frozen the temperature consist consistency is much better and easier to work with okay so um, I really believe they're about done I'm gonna leave them sitting in here so that they continue to cook a little bit and they stay yeah they're done and they stay nice and warm so I'm just gonna turn them off and we're going to set them to the side and make a few eggs. We'll just make our eggs on with this. Why not? And let's do um, sunny side up for Chris. And of course, I bust my yellow when I'm making him one like that because it doesn't take as long to cook um, one that you're not getting done all the way. So we'll make a couple of eggs and then we're going to have a delicious breakfast. Okay. Yummy. OK. 
Okay, our biscuits are done and they're beeping. Now let's grab an egg. molar pulled yesterday so I'm not that crazy about y'all seeing my swollen face so I don't know that I'll I don't know Chris might pick this up once y'all see me before it's over uh oh I just cracked that right in the middle like a ding dong I don't know why I did that but I did oh I gotta turn it down it's way too high sorry For mine, I got it too hot, y'all, for Chris's sunny side up. Let's take it up for a minute. Let's put a little salt and pepper on it. I hear you. I know you're mad at me. Got you too warm, didn't I? Put a little salt on it. I salt and pepper everything while I'm cooking. I'm not like these people that think that you don't have to. In my opinion, you need to. I'm actually going to let this one be Chris's, I think. I don't know. Unless it's stuck. Because it didn't get quite as brown as this one right here. Um, so I'll bust that one for me and save that one for Chris. Now he likes for me to flip his. And make sure that all of this part's done too. But now the yellow's never, you know, cooked done. So let's go ahead and flip it up. You want to get underneath that yellow and then flip it. I dreamed about snow and ice and firewood last night. It was the strangest thing. All right, let's get us out of plate. Chris, honey, you ready to eat? I'll put his on a black plate so it'll be pretty. For the picture. All right, I'm going to take his off and I'm going to flip it so y'all can see that the yellow is still really runny. Okay? We'll just turn it off for mine because I like mine real good and done anyway. Um, we're going to grab him some hash browns and put them on the plate. Okay, put in a couple of pieces of sausage on the plate. We're having a big breakfast, so we won't eat lunch today. And let's go over here and get our biscuits. We could have put a little butter on top of them. Let's do that real, real quick. I got my butter just sitting right here. I'm going to pick it up with my hands, y'all, because that's what I'd do if y'all weren't on here. And I wouldn't try to make a show. I try to just do things just like I would if you weren't here. Because that's how you learn to cook. If you really want to cook like Mama did, Mama didn't have a video on her. Trying to impress people. Okay. Them biscuits got good and brown. Maybe I shouldn't have put four minutes. Maybe I should have put two minutes. But that's the way my daddy likes them. Look at these nice little biscuits that bis biscuit cutter made. There's our plate. This is getting some ice. And um, I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to let Chris in the video. Did you show him your potatoes come in? Yeah, those are hash brown potatoes. They come in a, um, a box, like an old um, carton, like you used to get your milk out of at the lunchroom. So... Um, I'm gonna let y'all. I'm gonna let Chris hold this and end the video real quick. Wait a minute. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right. So, what you got to say to him, Chris? Thanks for watching, Collar Valley Cooks. We eat. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for watching, Collar Valley Cooks, where we eat what Mama cooked. All right. Thanks for watching, y'all. Love y'all. We're eating and digging in. Bye.